Greetings YouTube, welcome back to Final Fantasy XII and welcome back to the Hunt Club. We're going to continue on our tradition today of completing a couple more rare mobs for the Hunt Club quest. So do come and join me if you enjoy watching, don't forget to hit the like button and stay tuned. We finished off last time in the Tachita Uplands and fortunately there's another hunt we can do here so we're going to do that before we leave this place. And starting at the Orange Crystal, we're going to make our way over to the east. Now, unfortunately, this first hunt we're going to be doing can be a little bit frustrating, a little bit annoying. And there's a reason for that, which we're going to explain as we get a bit closer to it. Uh, but basically, in a nutshell, we're going to have to try and spawn it twice. Well, you don't have to, but yeah, I'm just going to wait till we get there. I'm going to show you the path first of all. So just head to the east here. And we're going to the final section before the Blue Save Crystal in the Tachita Uplands. Ah, oh, should not have been to this bit, it's, it was all greyed out. Anyway, just keep going east. Now, before we head into this final section here, we're going to just sort our characters. I'm going to slow things down just a touch as well. Right, now, the hunt we're going for, or the mark rather that we're going for, is Grim Alkin, and it's a level 38 or 39 Coel, and has about 23,000 health. So it's going to spawn in this next area. It has a 10% chance of replacing uh, each of the corals that are in that area. So obviously it can only spawn, you know, once. Uh, and there's about 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10 corals in there. And each coral has a 10% chance of spawning uh, as the guy that we want to kill. So we might have to enter a few times. But because of the way this works, if it doesn't spawn, we need to quit the zone by two zones in order to come back and see if it's reset. But also, the other thing that's worth noting is that this guy has the Coel Whisper. And we need two Coel whis Whiskers, sorry. And we need two Coel Whiskers for the Mesa uh, weapon. And it's a ninja sword, I believe. And it's a good weapon, one that you'll probably want to get. And it's a bizarre recipe. There's a few other things we need to get for it as well. But while we're here, we need to get the Coel Whiskers. And because we need two of them, we need to steal from this guy and then escape without killing him because these guys only appear once for the hunt club remember which you kill them they never respawn again and then we need to go and steal it a second time so i'm going to equip the thief gloves here on balthea and i'm going to turn off then all the gambits so that we don't accidentally go in killing everything if you're not interested in the mace weapon then you know this obviously isn't something you need to do you can just kill the monster but I would recommend that you do at least have a look at this weapon because it's going to be a useful one more than likely okay I thought with that shell we might have had a bit of uh, action but sadly no look so just got to check all of these there's not much else we can do unfortunately apart from go around the area go around the map and see if this fella has spawned Yes, he has. There he is. Okay, so, first things first. Want to be careful not to get obliterated here while we're doing this. We want to steal the Coral Whisker. And there we have, we got it. So, we need another one. And, unfortunately, I can't just kill him now. Otherwise, we'll never be able to get the second one. So, we need to go ahead and quit two zones. That's probably easier to go this way. And need to try and get him to respawn again. Which can sometimes be easier said than done. Because he does have that low 10% chance for each of the coals. Which isn't guaranteed. You might have to go in a few times. So that's two zones. So that should be enough. And you've got the save point here as well to heal up if you need to. Red Ass looks like he's uh, suffering just a little bit. And now I'll look for him again and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've found this guy once more. And I'll just turn a couple of gambits on to stay healed. As uh, Balthea attempts to steal from it. And hopefully it's not going to take too much longer. But as you can see, we're getting the cut and steal quite often here. There we go, we've got the second core whisker, which is what I was after. So what I'm going to do now is just turn on our other gambits. And we can basically kill this guy. Nothing to stop us from uh, taking him out now for the hunt. For the actual quest. So let's turn the steel gambit off. And turn our healer's attack gambit back on. And we'll just finish him off. It won't take long to take out of the horse. If, 
do struggle with him, you can even go ahead and dispel the shell. But, you know, that's entirely up to you. Anyway, once he's dead, you'll get the Whisker Trophy. And we've got the first two items we need for the Mesa, which we can get at the Bazaar. Uh, you also need three Cancer Gems and two uh, Slithered Swords or something. But I'll probably do another video on it in the future. So that's the end of the first of today's rare mobs. Anyway, I hope that little bit of uh, tip with the whiskers that you'll want to see helped you out as well. She so didn't go killing it too quickly. And let's go and move on then. While we're in the Tachita Uplands, then we're going to go and do the rare that's in the Search and Cave Palace. This We have done a rare in here before, but this is a new one. This is Anubis we're going for now. So you do want to enter from this particular entrance rather than using the Omin Save Crystal. Although it doesn't really make a big difference, but I mean we're here, so we may as well. So the Search and Cave Palace is the northern cave. You have been here and through this path as part of the story. So I'm sure you knew that already. Watch out for the traps. You can use float, of course, to dodge them. But I'm just doing the lazy version of not using float and then healing up. Should we take any damage? Although at least one of the traps in this place, I think in this next area, is a positive trap. One of the very rare positive traps in the game that actually heals your party rather than hurts them. So, bear that in mind. It still looks the same on the floor. But I think it's around here, actually. Let's have a look. I'm curious now. And it's not going to be out of the way. See this? Yeah, there it is, look. Positive trap for you. So, anyway, head north until you can head east here to the ancient door. A couple of ancient doors to make our way through. And we're going to have to do the waterfall puzzle in order to get access to the secret room, which is where Anubis spawns. And Anubis, which is a level 38 or 39 fiend, is going to be, I believe, the final of our pre-level 40 uh, marks for this hunt quest. Okay, so things are going to start to get just a little bit more tricky after this point. Probably not so much for me, because I'm in my 50s now. But if you're under-leveled, then it could be for you. So just bear that in mind. I've tried to do them in difficulty order. Uh, at least to the best of my ability. Yeah. Right then, so we're just going to enter the exit that's to the far east of this room here. And we're just going to pop inside. And then pop out again. And we're going to make our way now. I'm just going to slow things down a bit. You see on the map, all the way from this eastern exit. Yeah. All the way around to the western exit, the farthest on the left. And this is how we're going to do the waterfall puzzle in order to unlock the secret room. So just keep going around. You can kill the enemies or you can flee from them. It makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. I'll just flee for the sake of time. Although doing all these quests, all these marks for this hunt quest, is uh, giving us a nice bit of experience, in all honesty. And I'll exit through this furthest part here. And you might get a message there saying that the door is unlocked or the waterfalls have changed. I didn't because I've already been practicing, so it won't show up on my screen, unfortunately. But I'm still showing you the correct path. Head up here, and then out the door on the other side. The southern door on the other side. And then we're taking the second path from the east here, rather than the furthest. And then make your way over the bridge. And out the next exit. So again, just follow me on the map. We're just going to make our way around clockwise once more. And this time we're going to be entering the second exit from the left, rather than the furthest. And we're just kind of going this spiral shape through all the exits. Once again, if you don't get any messages saying the waterfalls have been adjusted, then that all that means is that you've done this puzzle before. It's not going to hurt you that you're doing it again. If you know you've done it before, then, you know, you don't need to do it, I guess. But this is important that, from my perspective, that I show everyone else how to do it, in case they haven't. And then from here, we're again going to make our way over to the end, since it's the only way we can go. But instead of going through the first door, 
stuff there. Instead of going through this first door on the uh, end here, we're going to go through the second. Just continuing on with that spiral loop. So this is the door we now want to use. Or the exit we now want to use. And then we're back in this place where we just go through both of the doors on the bottom here. Here's the first one. And we're getting there. We're getting there. Nearly there now. <laughs> and back through here. And then we take this first exit now. Which is the only exit we haven't come through up, up until this point. And then you might get a message once you come through here saying that a door has opened in the distance. That's what you want to hear. Unless you've already done this before, then you won't. And then head down into this little crook here where there's a door. The Pilgrim's door. And you can just select to open the door if uh, it's your first time coming here. And there'll be a treasure chest you can spawn, uh, that can spawn. You'll want to grab that. And as we come in, we'll be able to attack the... Anubis Fiend, which is going to spawn right in front of us. He's just a little bat. You can steal Vampire Fangs from him if you want to. So, just bear that in mind as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and take him out quickly. And there he goes. He's down. And we get the Sanguine Trophy for our trouble. How wonderful. And that's basically it. That's two more hunts down, so we can... You know, take a break now for a little bit. So I'm going to finish off the video. So thanks for joining me. I hope these, uh, you know, little instructions on how to take care of these marks for this quest have been helpful to you thus far. And let us know how you get on in the comments as well. And if you're keeping up with the hunt quest yourself. So cheers for joining us, guys. And I'll see you soon for more Final Fantasy XII. Goodbye.